I am in Fairhaven, which is near Bellingham, and I am going to cycle the Bellingham part of the Interurban Trail. It's not super long, but there is a steep portion in the middle where there's a trestle out. You have to take kind of a single track um, switchbacks. And I guess that part's kind of confusing, so hopefully I can make my way through it. I should end up in the same parking lot as the uh, Clayton Beach Trailhead, which I was at just a couple weeks ago. It is a gorgeous day, it's supposed to be super hot, and here we go. Starting out crossing Haddon Creek. Starts out with a steep hill up, and then I'm on a sidewalk. And I'm heading toward Arroyo Park. It is marked. And the street crossing. Hello. Hi. I'm not sure if this is Haddon Creek still, but there is a wetland in here. I don't know if you can see it through the trees. Seems like a great place for birding. A lot of people walk this trail as well. This is a multi-use trail. Oh, it feels great to be on the bike again. We're just 0.17 in. Five seven in. It's the beautiful forest in here. This pleasant railway grade doesn't follow the traditional railway track, but an electric train. The Bellingham Skagit Inner Urban Railway was an electric train, also referred to as a trolley. It carried passenger and freight from Bellingham to Mount Vernon. It whizzed along the track at around 50 miles per hour from 1912 to 1930. I've come to a junction and I'm going to see how far this overlook is and then I'm going to go to the right to stay on the interurban trail. I am 1.14 in. Oh, well, this isn't far at all. We're now at 1.2. Here's the overlook. And what this was, was an old trestle that was part of the Bellingham Skagit Railway, which was that electric rail. It's actually a trolley. And I am going to be going down this way. I don't know if you can see those bike bicyclists through the woods, around the corners. And then I'm actually gonna do a little bit on the road you can go through Arroyo Park, but it's very steep single track that's heavily used by pedestrians. So there will be some steep parts of this trail and I'll probably be doing some hike-a-bike. Right now I am at 1.36, going down this grade to the road. A right on this road and then up here I'm gonna make a left on Chuckanut. All right I am 1.66 into my ride and I'm looking for the North Chuckanut trailhead. There's a parking lot with a porta potty and then I'm gonna take a trail from that up and it looks like I'm on the wrong side of the road. You're on Chuckanut such a short time if you're aiming for this parking lot that I recommend staying on the wrong side of the road for that short stretch so you can turn right into the parking lot and avoid having to cross traffic. I 
I am at the North Chuckanut Mountain Trailhead, which I would like to do sometime. I'll be heading up that way to find the Interurban Trail again, but first, a little visit to the Honey Bucket. So there's a couple cool maps here. We are here, and we're gonna go up the um, trail, I guess right here, and then we're gonna hit the Inner Urban Trail again, and I'll show you a bigger map. These are all the trails that tie in to this trail system on Chuckanut. Just really, really cool. Every one I've done, done Pine and Cedar, um, Lost Lake, and I don't see fragrance on here. It might be slightly separate, but um, they're all awesome. So we are right, oh, where are we? We're up this way. Oh, we're right here. We haven't gone very far at all. And we're gonna go down the inner urban uh, trail. And um, I've heard there's a steep ravine right here. And we're gonna go down to this parking lot right here and then turn around. Should be fun. It's a gorgeous day. First hill is a hiking hill. It is not railroad grade. Let's see how far I can get. This is so fun. 1.82, okay. A little boardwalk for the bike. Never done this before. Sweet. Inner urban trail. Woo, another steep one. You can see that the Chuckanut trails go up that way, and I am going to continue on straight. This is a great ride for a hot day. There's a lot of shade. 2.1, this is a, an easement for the interurban trail, but it is private property, private road here. It's nice and wide and flat. There is the Teddy Bear Cove Beach Access Trail right across Chuckanut Drive, which we pretty much parallel this entire way. But I'm not gonna take a side trip today. 2.47, we're about to cross a road, but it's not Chuckanut Drive. It's actually on a side street. Still a lot of traffic, but it's paved. So that's kind of a nice break. Get up a little speed. Point six eight. We're getting some beautiful views of the sound now. Gorgeous. Way up on a bluff now here. I don't know if you can see glimpses of the sound through the trees. That's the Puget Sound out there. And we're far above Chuckanut Drive. Bellingham and Skagit Interurban Railway had an interesting nickname, and that was the trolley that went to sea. The reason for this was that there were four miles of trestle built out over the sea. The actual railroad owned the waterfront, and it was much cheaper to build the trestle than to blast more track into the side of the hill. Apparently, it was quite a fight trying to keep it maintained because the saltwater worms really loved the wood they used. 3.17 This is just a really beautiful trail and while some portions have been pretty busy I've been on it for a while now maybe the last five ten minutes at least not a single soul in sight from in front or behind me and it's just bird song
on a parking lot, 4.3. This is where there is a steep ravine, I'm told. So let's just keep it rolling. Hopefully I don't wipe out. There's not any curves I can build up some speed. a little steep. And a little rutted. And go for it. Woo! Oh, come on. You can do it. Almost there. Ah! Woo! Success. Oh no, there's more hill. <laughs> Here's Hiker T doing what I do best, hiking. Although I brought a friend. <laughs> I almost made it to the top of this hill. 4.3. I just crossed into the state park boundary. Five point three one. Lake was the first time I saw the inner urban trail up here and I was like man I've got to come back to this. The advent of the family automobile and buses brought about the end of the trolley that went to sea and its fate was sealed with a few accidents toward the end of its run but what a cool thing that would be to see. I really wanted to include a picture but I called the museum and they said they didn't have a single one. I'll include links in the description to a couple interesting articles I found on it online. I'm at 6.05 and I've reached Chuckanut Drive. This is, I think, overflow parking for the Clayton Beach Trailhead, which is a left just up here. There's the parking lot and a bathroom. And that was gonna be my stopping point, but um, this is pretty much the end of the trail, I think. So I'm gonna just turn around here. Just going back out the same way I came, so I don't plan on doing a whole lot of filming, but if I see something interesting, I'll definitely turn on the cameras and show you. I am at 6.05, and uh, what a glorious ride. Striped coral root is an orchid. It doesn't use photosynthesis to get its energy, instead it has a parasitic relationship with the fungi that it grows in. Forgive the hat hair. That was a great ride. 12.22 miles round trip. 363 feet of elevation, beautiful the whole way, hardly any actual urban riding. I'm just a little at the beginning and we got on that street. Oh, I'm still wearing my gloves. <laughs> um, and then a lot of it just through the forest, sun shining through the trees, um, birds singing the whole way. Um, couldn't ask for a better ride. Not super long, but um, enough little hills to make it a fun challenge. <laughs> 